In this video, I'm going to show you four things that you can do with Adobe Photoshop's Generative Fill feature. Hi and welcome or welcome back to DIY Film with Merle Becker, the channel where I help you make better videos. All right, back in May of 2023, Adobe released an AI feature for Photoshop called Generative Fill. Some people love it, others hate it. I think it's good for some things, like extending background images for text placement, but more on that in a minute. Generative Fill allows you to add and remove images from images non-destructively, meaning you can alter the image without altering the original. As is the case with all AI tools, Generative Fill should be used responsibly. If you're creating news or educational content, make sure you're not misrepresenting your subject. To use Generative Fill, you have to have Photoshop version 25 or above. Also, if it's not showing, make sure your Layers panel is open by going to Window and making sure there's a check by Layers. All right, let's go. Four things that you can do with Photoshop's Generative Fill. One, add objects. Maybe the most fun and somewhat random thing that you can do with Generative Fill is add objects to an existing image. Here is how you do it. Choose the Rectangular Marquee tool from the Tool Palette on the left to select an area of your image. If your Tool Palette isn't open, go to Window, and at the bottom, make sure there's a check mark by Tools. Then, if you aren't seeing a prompt for Generative Fill, go to your Edit menu and select Generative Fill. Then, type in the name of the object you want to put in your image. Hit Generate and wait for the magic. Now, once Photoshop has generated your image, you can see here in the Layers panel that the added image is on a layer of its own. You can toggle the eyeball to turn it on and off, and you can drag it to the trash can in the lower right if you don't like it. Also in the Properties window, also made visible by going to Window and making sure there's a check mark by Properties, you can see that Photoshop has offered you three varieties of your image. So if you don't like the first option, you can click one of the others. Fun stuff. Another use for Adobe Photoshop's Generative Fill feature is to remove objects. Say you have something in your image that you just don't like. To remove it using Generative Fill, use the lasso tool to select the area you want to remove. When you do this, make sure you're selecting a little bit outside of your object. Then hit Generative Fill on the taskbar, leave the field blank, and hit Generate. And boom, it's gone. Now, Photoshop is taking info from other parts of your image to generate the fill, so sometimes things can get a little wacky. But for the most part, it's a quick way to get rid of blemishes and other unwanted items in your image. Three, expanding images. Say you're creating a design where you need a bit of space for text or UI buttons or something. Consider expanding your image in one or more directions by using Photoshop's Generative Fill. To do this, first make sure your canvas is small enough for you to have space to expand it. Go to the lower left of your canvas and reduce the percentage so that you have plenty of space around your image. Then select your crop tool from the toolbar and expand the image in the direction you need some more room. Then hit generate. And like the other uses, Photoshop also gives you three options to choose from if you don't like the first. And if you don't like it at all, hit Command Z on a Mac, Control Z on a PC to undo it. Now you have plenty of room for buttons or other random things. And the last one is four, create background images. Lastly, you can use Generative Fill to change the background in your image. If you want to put your subject elsewhere for whatever reason, here is how you do it using Generative Fill. First, make sure you have your background layer selected by going to the Layers panel and clicking on the background. 
assuming that's your image and not a solid color or something. Then in the Generate a Fill taskbar, click Select Subject. By the way, you can also select your subject manually by using the lasso tool and refining the edges to make it more precise. But for now, we're just doing a quick select subject here by hitting this button. Next, you want to reverse your selection by going to the Select menu and choosing Inverse. Shortcut Shift-Command-I on a Mac or Shift-Control-I on a PC. Then type in the name of the background you want to replace the existing one with in the Generative Fill taskbar. And pick from the additional options Photoshop offers you if you aren't happy with the first one. Nice. Weird. Also weird. Even weirder. Um, help. And those, my friends, are four things that you can do with Adobe Photoshop's generative fill feature. Again, some people are loving it, others are hating it. How do you feel about generative fill? If you like it, what are you using it for? Leave me a comment below and let me know. And if you found any of this to be helpful, please give the video a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell so you know when the next one is posted and I will catch you next time.